All right, so after a ton of absolutely terrible weather, we are finally back up here with an update for you guys. And a failed inspection. Hey there, my name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to Mi Casa. So today is episode four of our farmhouse build. And again, I have my husband here with me because we have a lot to go over. It's been, it's been fun or not. <laughs> yeah, what is it? Three weeks? I don't know. We're losing like, track of time now. Yeah. I feel like we've, <laughs> we lost three weeks there. So we're like pretty behind since last time we um, were able to give you guys an update on our build. And unfortunately it's all been due to our weather. We've had some really bad rain storms, cold just it just didn't want to dry for the longest time and we had delays um and and you know subcontractors not showing up so it's been you know construction it's yeah and unfortunately <laughs> around here we have come to learn that when it rains and there's storms or bad weather everybody gets behind yeah. and the minute that the sun comes back out everything that was delayed has to be put back, you know, into order. And so those have to be finished before new projects have to get started. And we were kind of caught in that um, because the people that were going to come out and do our blocks for our foundation, mm -hmm. unfortunately, they had to finish prior work that never got done before the bad weather came in. So we were just basically sitting here in the sun waiting for them to show up because they were finishing other projects. And unfortunately, after the sun was here, nothing got done. And then we got more bad weather. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so it's just been, it's just been a battle against the weather right now. But what we do have are a couple of items that we want to go ahead and share and just kind of what we've learned um, so far about this next step. One of them was our blocks for the house because we had put in all our footers. We poured that in. That's what you guys saw last time. But then I guess maybe you can explain it a little bit better, but because we are on top of a mountain and we are on rock, they weren't able to dig in to the ground to create a flat, perfectly level surface for our slab to sit on. Because there was areas where there was so much rock and it was a little bit higher than others, they actually had to build up the footers, right? So that everything was nice and even. Did I say that? <laughs> like, let him explain. <laughs> and then I, I, I'm, I'm and I start talking. No, that, that, okay, so why don't you explain? You probably no, do no, a better job. No, no, no. <laughs> no that's a, exactly what it is. Uh, one side was high, the other side was low, and normally the high side gets dug in. That way they're both the same. Well, since the rock, we couldn't do that. So what we did on the low side is built up to make it all level. So the low side had several levels of block, I think had six levels of block and um, the low side only had one level. So it kind of, once everything was even, leveled everything out. And that was the start of the foundation to be able to backfill everything in. And then so we can have the slab poured. So, I mean, it's going to end up being the thickest slab we've ever seen in our lives. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Basically. Finally, the contractor and his workers came out mm -hmm. And I mean, how many bags of block did we use? There was a lot of block. Uh, I think it was 1200 block was used around the perimeter. And it was like three and a half tons of sand. And uh, I don't know how many bags of mortar um, for mixing with the sand to make, you know, the, the mortar for it. So it was a bunch. And everything that was built up. It was all along all of the footers. Basically, the perimeter of the house, the perimeter of the garage, and the perimeter of the front and back porch. They all had to have block. It was pretty fascinating to see because they um they have a, a a process, and you guys will see at the end of the video how it all kind of like just comes together and how they work together and just move along and just continue adding um cinder blocks. So that was kind of nice to see happen. Yeah, and it was uh, it was great. Once they started, they were done like that. <laughs> it, was, it was two days. Yeah, it was two days, and they were done. It was two days. Yeah, it, it it's amazing how fast they work. Um, 
and um, how clean it was all. They did not waste a single block. I don't think we had any. We did not have an extra block, as a matter of fact, I think. No, they, I mean, I think there was like a, a, like a couple a broken, of scraps. Right. Scraps. <laughs> you just throw it inside. Right. But yeah, they use absolutely every single block. They did a great job as far as counting mm -hmm. and getting it to the, the exact number, which is really cool. And then we had our failed inspection. And you know the irony of it all <laughs> is that it was the electrical yeah. portion. My part. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently our electrical contractor doesn't have no. his stuff together. No, no. <laughs> no, we're just kidding. Um, so uh, to run our power to our home, um, there's two ways you can do it. You can have underground. Basically, they dig a big ditch put pipe in, your wire goes underneath, or you can do overhead. Um, we're so far away from the road. Um, in order to do overhead, you got to put a bunch of those big, ugly poles all the way down our <laughs> driveway, down our property. And we're like, well. And then you're going to have cables. Right. And then you have the cable loops and then the cable hangs onto your roof. And it would have been like, Not I very don't know, pretty. over 500 feet of overhead. Plus you have that big, it almost looks like a little the little arm thing. Yeah, it looks like that a, comes what, what do you call it? like a like a duck head or something? You know, I don't know. <laughs> it just it's, it's got the little crook with all the little wires hanging out. And I was like, well, I don't want that because like it's you know, if there's a pretty. storm or something, that stuff over time leans, breaks, or you know, in the event of a storm and it knocks the power poles, that stuff's gonna rip off our you know off our house. And I was like, yeah, you know, we get some pretty gnarly storms. So I was like, let's not have that. Um, and because one of our neighbors up the road, I mean, his power pole during one of our bad storms ripped in half. So that's so why I was like, man, if that happens on our house, like it's going to be so expensive to fix it. Let's and just. That, and that was a transformer right. that blew. Right. That led us not to have power, power for, for like four days, something like that. Week. So, yeah, we don't want that to happen. <laughs> right. We don't want our neighbors to lose power because of us or, or anything like that. It was. Yeah. It, it was pretty wild. So if anything goes bad, I'd rather be on the utility side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, not on ours. my side. <laughs> so we had to dig underground. After deciding whether or not we wanted above or in ground electrical wiring, then we had to figure out where we wanted it to be placed mm -hmm. on the property. Now, we could have gone from the front because, as you guys recall, we changed the driveway and we moved it up on our property to have a brand new driveway for our home. And we could have had power coming in from that end. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> it was going to look unsightly even if we were going to go underground because they were going to add poles, several poles, on the perimeter of our property regardless. So even though we were going underground, if we would have come from the front of our property, we would have still had like uh, power poles in the Correct. front. Uh, in order to get power in front directly going towards the house, um, they would have to tap from our neighbor's power lines. Mm -hmm. So they would have, we would have had to have gotten an easement from their property to put a, an additional one or two power poles from their property to then run over to a new pole at the edge of our property and then go underground to our home. Right. So, so there like, would have been like a pole right at the end of our driveway right. by itself. And it would have, that would have looked. And then the whole, <laughs> you know, getting an easement from your neighbors. I mean, our neighbors are awesome, but like, like let's not involve them. Let's, let's do something that's on our own property. And luckily we already had a power pole on the other side of the property. Um, but that just meant the underground was a lot longer now. <laughs> And this was the same poll that we showed you guys when we were um, installing power on our property just to even move here and live when we were living in the camper. Um, we actually had that pole installed on the side of the property and it's coming right now. It's powering this cottage. So we're going to pull a separate power. Um, I guess, how do you say that line? Uh, a separate service. Separate service for the house. Mm -hmm. And so it's coming off of that pole. It's already there. That work has already been done. But the only thing is now we're digging a lot farther. Right. So now we have to go underground and then we get one of those big green boxes. You know, you've seen those things that like the transformer. Thing? Yeah, or the, the transformers. Yeah. So you, so you get a small medium voltage transformer that sits, you know, on our property and it hums and, 
And, you know, if you were a kid, you've been around those places where you would play around the little green thing or you play tag and you'd be like, all right, the transformer is safe. So you would run around, <laughs> touch the transformer. But then if you set on transfer too long, it'd get hot and it'd burn your butt, you know, you don't, you never did that. No, I never did that. <laughs> I never did that. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Now, yeah. what I remember in our neighborhood, like the, when my parents, um, when we ended they up moving to Georgia. what I'm talking about. There's no, neighborhoods or apartments. That what have I used to see, what I used to see, though, in my neighborhood was the girls taking the their their phones from their house. Remember how you used to walk around on the landline, but it was like the the one without the cord? Mm -hmm. They would go and sit on top of the transformer in their yard and talk on the phone. That's what I would see. They'd get out of the house with their like the like the yeah, didn't play cordless. Tag. No, that's didn't, what that's what I saw. No, come on, tag or, no, or um nope. hide and seek. And then I didn't, but it's not even big enough for you to hide behind. No, you you hide around the homes and then That was base. Base was the transformer, <laughs> so you would run and then like, you know, if you weren't careful, you'd slip and then you'd like slam into the transformer. Well, as long as you don't get electrocuted, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. They, they were <laughs> hot. It felt great during the winter. So when you, if you played it during the winter, it, you know, it was actually wasn't too bad. But in the summer, they'd get pretty hot. I learned something new about my husband today. But anyway. So, <laughs> so because, so unfortunately, because it is a longer distance that they have to travel, we are going to only be able to pipe um, uh, the electrical, like the in-ground incoming mm -hmm. up to the transformer. Mm -hmm. And then from the transformer, more pipe into the house from right. there that's that's the reason you i think you missed that i think you missed that part i don't know right so like uh I, I, we've it's been a while well, since we did an update and I, I don't know i think he's all over the place right now but yes that's why because they only do up to a certain amount of feet right so the utility uh voltage that you see on the power poles are a higher voltage than you have for your home um if you are within a certain footage, they'll put a transformer that looks like a big gray trash can on the pole, and then they run the low voltage 240 volt down to your home. Um, but if you're over a certain distance, they're gonna run the high medium voltage. It's not high voltage, it's medium voltage. But anyways, they're gonna run that voltage to the transformer. That transformer is gonna step it down to the voltage that you use for your home. Right, so, then it was up to us or our team here in order to dig that trench. And Nelson actually went and you got the pipe yourself and everything, mm -hmm. right. right? So in order, the utility does not run any of the uh, conduit that the wire goes in. Um, certain places, I know in Georgia, um, they did our underground, they just buried the wire. They didn't run pipe for our old home. But I don't know what the code was 30 years ago for that house because it was like a 34 year old home. But now that wire has to be inside a conduit. So I had to go buy a conduit, three inch PVC, bury a certain depth and run pipe all the way up to the power pole. And then they'll come back and connect the wire and pull all the wire in to the transformer and then the wire from the transformer to the home. The kicker here is, is that this pipe has to be buried a certain amount of depth and being on the mountain we have rock now we got very lucky the majority of the trench right. was actually very um it was free of rock or they were able to remove right. the rocks fairly easily but there was this one section that was giving us some serious trouble and so what we thought was maybe the inspector would kind of be a little you know lenient and perhaps allow us to pour concrete in that area because it was a little bit higher than the rest. And that way it would protect it because I think the reason that they wanted a certain amount of depth is because they don't want anybody running over it and then it getting damaged. That right? or if you go back and dig in, like if you do like a, a shallow ditch, they don't want you to hit, you know, the medium voltage. Right. So that's kind of what they wanted it at. How, how deep was it that they wanted it? It's, I think it was like 30. So, yeah. And for the most part, 30 we, inches, excuse me. And for the most part, we did reach um, that, but there was this one section, and, you know, they thought they would test their luck with the inspector and see, hey, maybe we can put cement here and cover it up. But nope, that did, he didn't go for that. <laughs> 
so we had to get a uh, big rock buster. So it's a, it's a, what that is, it's a huge jackhammer that's at the end of an excavator, a big excavator. And then they had to come over here and hammer it all, all out. And uh, so obviously that adds more time and money. money. <laughs> that's, that's the big one here. So we had to rent one of those, get it out here. Luckily, they came out pretty quickly. And then um, we got it dug and then we met the code and you guys dug the pipe in and we're ready to go as far as the pipe from the servant, from the pole all the way up to the transformer. That's already dug. That's already yep. completed. That's we don't have to worry about that anymore. Now, the only thing that's left is the pipe that goes from the transformer to the home. But we couldn't dig that up because we had a bunch of other trucks they had to come and do a ton of work around the home so that is going to be in a further f video that's the next episode <laughs> we can't come at you guys with so many different things we gotta like kind of break it up so that we don't get lost um but yeah that is kind of what happened with our inspection for the electrical and um and the block and that was the big deal because without that block we can't put gravel in we can't put the cement in for the slab i mean we couldn't do anything we were at a standstill because of that block because we couldn't do anything else right and then you can't done. grade around the house and put uh essentially bringing all the dirt back filling behind it so yeah we were it was a little testy there for a minute. This guy was stressing out quite a bit, calling almost like every day. When are they showing up? When are they showing up? When are they showing up? And it felt, you know, obviously we're about three weeks behind. But um, I, a month. A month? Yeah, we lost like four weeks. So we're about a month behind. And unfortunately, that's just what you expect in construction. But now that that's done, looks like we're picking up some speed and we're hopefully gaining some traction. So that is it for this week's update and our latest episode of our home build. We hope you enjoyed it and make sure you stay tuned because we're going to share the B-roll of all of the work and everything that we encountered this week that we just talked about. Check it out. It is windy. I don't know if y'all are going to be able to hear me, but uh, here's the update real quick. They are setting block. Up here is the high side. Down here is the low side. Normally, what you do is you cut the high side in to match the low side. But unfortunately, we can't do that because of the bedrock that we have. So they're going to put one layer of block over here. Multiple layers here. Like, uh, I think six layers. Five or six. And... Once this side is even with there, they come back, backfill it, put gravel, whatever they need to, and then you put your plumbing in and electrical and whatever else needs to go in the slab. And then one solid piece of slab, concrete gets poured. Um, other than the front porch will be one block below and the back porch and the garage. Those three areas are gonna be one block below or there'll be like an actual step down. So the house is one level, the front porch, back porch, and the garage will be one block below or eight inches below the rest.
while they are working on the foundation, we are excavating the power. So the incoming power is from that pole back there. And then it's gonna be run underground pipe all the way to this. That box gets buried and then the transformer gets put in and then pipe gets run from that transformer to this side. And then the breaker combo is gonna be put right here on the wall, but that's not out until they put framing up. And while this is still open, our incoming water is gonna be through here. So we're gonna put a chase through here and out past the driveway. And this little section, so this is like 10 by five. And this is where the utility, the incoming water. So it'll be hot water heater, uh, the filtration system, and anything that has to do with the plumbing. And then from there it goes to the rest of the house. The electrical will be on this wall. And then the wires from that box will come to panels that will be on this wall. So once this wall gets built, wire will be up and over and into this wall. So it's kind of hard to describe, but um, you'll see the whole process once it starts going and once we have everything up. Here's another view of the incoming power. So the power goes here, gets turned up into a meter breaker combo. It goes underground here the way over to this box piped over to here and then from there you can see that uh, excavator in the back so that's digging the ditch and then from this box it's gonna go all the way to that pole out there so we got a bunch of stuff going on here and then once all of that is set in then that should be most of the excavating that gets done on the property and then all the framing starts going up. So while they were digging our power, they broke our water line for a cottage. So. Oh, now you make me feel bad. Uh oh, that was video. Oh man. Hey everyone, coming at you from the farm. It is super windy and ridiculously cold today. I'm so unhappy about this. <laughs> the weather has changed. And today we have more construction going on. But of course, things just can't go without a hitch. Um, they're currently digging um, where they're gonna feed the power to the new house. And that pole right there is our existing power to the cottage. But they have to dig this all the way past the cottage and to the house in order for us to get power to the house. Well, looks like we found the water line again. This time, the water line that feeds the cottage. <laughs> we have no water, yay! <laughs> the good thing is, is that my husband is a hoarder and he has all the supplies in order to repair it. <laughs> yep, so luckily we had uh, some pipe left over from when I installed the water line. So, um, but we are over this cold. You know, I, normally I love the winter, um, but I'm really looking forward to like, hopefully it's a really hot, dry, no rain summer. We were literally like, we had 70 degrees sunny weather just a couple days ago. And now it's like in the 30s up here. Yeah. <laughs> and it sucks. And the wind is blowing, so it's making it feel like it's 20. <laughs> uh, so, we are having some progress on the house, as you can see. We got some updates for you guys. We're gonna be putting a YouTube video together very soon about all the wonderful things to get us to this point. Um, but yeah, we're just dealing with a little snack today. Good times.
All right, so don't forget, go out there and play with your Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you guys very soon. Until then, go dogs. Adios. <laughs>